right, Technivorous here. So real quick, I wanted to discuss with you guys why exactly it is I prefer Fusion 360 for doing technical models or mechanical parts um, to Blender, which I use more for sculpting. Uh, if I want millimeter perfection in something, this is generally where I'm going to go, and there's a couple reasons for that. Now, this is a uh, uh, shower head that I... Well, it's a mount for a shower head that I'm designing. It's basically the shower head will slip in here. This arm will attach here, and then there's a peg and rod that, or a rod and uh, a nut and a bolt that go through there. Um, one of the reasons I prefer to use this for things like this is because it has these patterns here for inset screws, and there are, in fact, a bunch of different hardware components we'll get into later when we're doing the tutorials. Um, but you can make holes specifically set for certain kinds and sizes of screws, and there's a whole catalog of those screws. Uh, and not only that, but you can, as evidenced by the part I will show you that I printed for this, um, make your objects to the exact size and threading of those screws uh, if you're making holes for screws or if you're making the actual bolt it itself. So I'll show you a piece that I printed uh, that's basically going to go through here and mount the arm and we'll get to that in a few minutes but for now we're going to look at a couple more things and I'll, I'll show you how easy it is to get going in Fusion 360. So right now I have my origin turned on and I'm basically just going to click on the floor plane, the bottom plane there um, and I want to hit create sketch and it'll go into a, a orthographic view and take you out of perspective. So now I'm looking at basically the top down and I have uh, I can search for tools by hitting the S button and it'll bring up some shortcuts that I have here and some other tools here. So basically this is what I use the most and that's why they're here. So we'll start with that. Say I know the dimensions of something I'm making, I'm going to create a box um, and it is going to be, let's see, 50 millimeters by uh, 28 millimeters, that sounds good to me. So um, since I'm using this center point rectangle, I can go ahead and just do it again and um, say I know my my outer dimensions are larger than my inner dimensions. Um, I can either punch them in here. I can just click it and then it'll leave the square blue and I actually can act on this, but there's another way that you can go in here and hit D and select two edges and then drag it out and it'll give you the distance between them. Uh, and using that, you can generally do um, quite a bit of size changes. So the next one that I want to do is this constraint right here. Um, and we're going to change that to 52. And as you can see, I have a, a fairly decent outline of a box here. Um, don't necessarily want to make a box. Uh, I can do a circle and then using the dimension button you can uh, measure the radius of that circle. Uh, we're going to have ours be exactly 50. Now this is all in millimeters so it, it does come out precise which is perfect for technical modeling. Like if I'm making a uh, miniature robot and I need to put a Raspberry Pi in there, I'm going to use this to mock up the Pi uh, and then use a Boolean subtraction method to take that away from whatever model so it fits in there pretty perfectly. Uh, just a quick look at some of the cool stuff that you can do. Um, now I've made this pattern obviously a ton of times in Blender as well. It's fairly easy, but I like the way that you can see my sketches here and see what's going on. Um, basically, you're looking at uh, a all circles. There's one major circle, two inner circles, and that creates this nice sinuous, the sinewy line here. Um, and basically, if I want to act on any of the planes in my sketch, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to using whatever tool I want. This time, I'm going to use the pull tool. Uh, reselect the faces and then I can just lift it up uh, as you can see here it is cutting it and that's why it's invisible I don't want to do that I want to join um, and I'm overlapping we'll do it about like there so you can still see the other dot now this guy here is off-centered but this is just an example 
Um, this you can actually print just the one half and the dot uh, in different colors and they fit together and make the whole thing. So um, you can also do new body, which we'll try that. That way I can move the dot. Uh, and then just hit OK. And that very easily makes, uh, you can select which piece you want. Line that back up there, that's better. Um, so uh, this is really, and it tells you the distance between things. You can, it's, you can get really technical and exact. So um, it's great for modeling precise things, like I said. We're gonna be using it to model some more objects. Real quick, let me show you a couple of things that I have printed on here. I talked about the Raspberry Pi and the uh, shower head that I'm making. So I'll show those to you and you can get a good idea of the exact uh, nature of the precision we're talking about with Fusion 360. All right, here you can see my two prints. I just finished up. They could use a little polishing, but uh, as always, I, I tend to be uh, excited to get things off the printer and show them to you. So uh, I haven't quite finished this up yet. This is the shower head. Uh, I will show you how well the, the shower head actually fits in it because that's uh, really great as well. But you can see my nice uh, chamfer on the on the screw holes here. So when I screw it in, it will be flush. Um, and it, you can see, look how, look how well that threading on that turned out from using their screw settings. And I'm going to see if I can unscrew it here. It does uh, unscrew pretty easily until it gets to the end there. Uh, the bolt comes out. And you can see uh, that's pretty darn accurate. So uh, works really well. Actually, uh, a pretty good solution for the hinge, so I can uh, rotate it and place it. Uh, the other mechanical part um, or technical model, I should say, is this guy here. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero uh, W. Um, I use this to run OctoPrint once in a while, but as you can see, it's got. Uh, the four pegs to sit on and the cutout slot for the GPIO pins in the back. So um, that fits pretty well. Uh, I am going to go back and make my pegs a little longer and print another one. Um, but the nice thing about Fusion 360 is to do that, all I'll have to do is grab the four faces on the circles and extrude them a little bit. Uh, and that will help secure it in there a little bit better. It is. Uh, pretty snug. I mean, it does fall out if you turn it upside down, but other than that, it's it's fitting very well. Um, you can also see that uh, I can also lower my back face down a little bit. There is a little bit of a gap here, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Um, this in Blender would have taken me uh, a lot longer to make simply because uh, I did go through two other iterations that uh, even though I measured it were slightly off and you can see that uh, it's pretty close but just wouldn't go in um, and I'm going to show you right now why Fusion 360 is so awesome for prototyping and fixing uh, making a minor adjustment like this without having to rebuild the whole model from scratch and real quickly, I just wanted to show you how well it fits into the mount there, the shower head. Um, you do have to slide it up and pull it out because the cord is thin enough to go through the passage there, but the head is not. So uh, it's going to be mounted up here so it sprays from the opposite direction of the other head. So that should be interesting. All right, so one of the reasons this program is so awesome is because... Um, here, I'm going to fix this real quick. Shift... Um, I'm selecting faces right now of these pegs. Come on. And hit extrude. Making quite a bit longer. Operation is join. Okay. Now, real quick, um, I have the sketches turned on. We're going to go in here and we're going to look at one of them. And as you can see, it has all my dimensions and my constraints. Um, now, this, this is a little bit sloppy. It can look a lot cleaner than this. I just This was a mock-up I did real quick to test part fitting. So um, the nice thing is if I decide that my pegs need to be a little bit larger, I come back. I All I have to do is click on the sketch, the dimension. If 
I can get in close enough to just grab the dimension, okay? And then say I want it to be 1.5. It keeps it in the same position, reduces the size. Um, and then from there, if I hit finish sketch, it will carry through the process of everything else it did after I made the sketch. So it'll it'll make uh, it'll have that effect on our part, and we don't have to actually go through the editing process and physically change its size. So let's see here. I'll hit finish sketch just to show you. And as you can see, the circle that I worked on. just now is smaller than it used to be so um, and that is in the model that is uh, the size of the peg so I'm actually gonna go and change that back now because I do want it to be two millimeters uh, that was working pretty well for me and just hit two and enter and finish sketch and as you can see it is back to the size it was before so um, when prototyping and adjusting to get this to fit what I did basically um, when it was just a little bit too snug. Uh, what I normally would do in that situation is turn on my horizontal expansion in Kira uh, to a negative value, which would increase the size of the hole, and then I wouldn't have to come back and remodel. But the newest Kira 4.2.1 doesn't let you put negative values in to horizontal expansion. Um, so I had to come back and remodel it for this to be slightly larger to increase the size of the gap that it made. So. Um, like I said, it's as simple as uh, I just grabbed this here and I changed it from 30 to 31. And then uh, I grabbed this one and changed it from 65.2 to 66.2. So uh, that and then hitting finish sketch finishes my whole model from the ground up. Because as you can see down here, there is this handy uh, window of 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 steps that have taken place right here actually I lost it for a second so uh, it tells you what you did in what order so this is an extrude uh, combine extrude all these different things that we did to get this shape that we have um, now the base shape of this I will go back to and it is just that uh, zero W card um, I also think that before I finish this uh, to give you another good example of what is what here um, this dimension here 4.40 we're gonna make that uh, 4.6 because I believe yep there is another one and we're gonna make this 1.6 no we're gonna make this 1.2 excuse me um, because that's the uh, hole that the GPIO pins go into, and I think it could be a little bit wider without having any problems. So I hit finish sketch, and like I said, it automatically makes that hole wider. So uh, it, it is amazing for adjusting a model a little bit and not having to worry about the other parts coming out correctly or messing them up somehow. Um, and you can even go in here and select, okay, this, this extrusion, I wanna change this by one millimeter, and you can go in and you can change it and hit okay. Um, so being able to edit you so something you've already done is like an undo button on steroids, okay? So that makes this uh, very, very handy for doing technical models and prototyping, finding uh, the exact measurements you need. Sometimes it'll take a couple test prints to get it precise, um, but with, with larger things, it is super simple to make uh, a good run the first time. And as always, guys, I am Technivorous. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. You can subscribe right here by clicking on the icon. And I put a couple videos up in the corner. One of them is going to be my latest video, my latest upload. And the other one is going to be what YouTube recommends for you. So feel free to check those out. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications down below. And we'll see you guys next time.